the Lord many years ago. And I've had a lot of heartache, met a lot of grief and woe. But when I went stumbled in, I could humble down. And there I would say I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. started the church there 28 years ago and as a 16 year old girl I was sitting in a pew kind of like these and I remember the Lord changing my hobby of singing into a call and uh, I knew at 16 that he was wanting us to start a group wanting me and my friends to start a group and little did I know that 11 years later I would be here singing for you this morning but uh, it's always a joy and we never take it lightly when we get to stand on the stage and sing for Jesus. And so I want to introduce my friends to you. We just want to have a good time. We love to laugh. We love to cry for the Lord. We love to worship the Lord. And that is why we're here today. What better way than on a homecoming day to celebrate Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, this girl right here. She has been with the group now for about five years. She's originally from Camden, Arkansas. And uh, when I approached Tequita, she filled in for us for a little while. And um, she was in Little Rock at the time. And she was working. She was very successful in her job. She worked at Hair Club. And I'll leave that there. And... Uh, <laughs> But uh, she, she was very successful, and I, I say that because 
everything Jaquita does, she does with all of her heart and, and her soul. And, and uh, she does that well with the group as, as well. And uh, when I approached her to fill in, we both kind of started praying. And God placed it on my heart to ask her to join full time. And she dropped her job. She, she sold her house. And uh, she gave up everything she had in Arkansas to join me and move to Hendersonville, Tennessee four years ago. And so I'm very proud to have her in this group. She's a great singer and a wonderful songwriter. How about it for Jaquita Lindsay? Now this guy right here, you've got to watch him. He is our ball of energy. He's a cut up and he's like that 24 hours a day. So uh, y'all make sure and pray for us. <laughs> and uh, you know, we love Logan. He, um, he actually, many of you may recognize him if you follow any of the Gaither Homecoming stuff. He used to travel with the Gaither Homecoming uh, tour when he was 12 and he used to do the Vestal Goodman impression. Now, so, so for those of you that don't know who Vestal Goodman is, that is in fact a woman. Um, so he has changed quite a bit, and if you look at his CDs, he's changed in stature and in voice. But uh, we're very pleased to have him. He's been with the group now for five months, no stranger to gospel music, and I know you'll love him. How about it all the way from Covington, Georgia, Logan Smith. <laughs>
savior to my soul Eternal rock of ages The precious cornerstone Is the alpha, omega The beginning and the end The author of salvation He's my dearest friend
Is it all right if we sing about our home?
Have I aught in my face? While the storms howled above me, seems there was no hiding place against the crash of the thunder. Precious Lord, hear my cry and keep me safe till the storm passes by. There's no need to try, for there's no end of sorrow. There's no hope in the by and by, but I know thou art with me, and tomorrow. The sky till the storm passes over till the thunder sounds no more till the clouds roll forever from the sky.
that song, um, it was so funny. My, my dad, he is one of those that loves nothing but country gospel, the old traditional. And I know there may be some of you in here, so just forgive us for the few progressive songs that we do. But um, we love all styles of, of music, of gospel music. If it uplifts the name of Jesus, we're all for it. And uh, we, we do love the old songs. However, all three of us are writers up here, so we'd be putting ourselves out of a job if we didn't uh, do some of our new songs. But uh, I, I really love that song, Jesus in the House. And what was funny is my dad, he did not like the style of that song. As a matter of fact, Logan, do that face that your grandpa usually does. Come here, let him, let him see it. This is, the, this is the exact face that my dad made when he heard Jesus is in the house. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> and uh, he said, oh, I just don't like that song. And then he really got mad when he found out that they were releasing that to radio. But just to show how God has a sense of humor, that was our very first number one that we ever had on the radio. <laughs> And uh, so I really like that song a lot, and uh, it has such a true meaning to it. I mean, in Christ, we may struggle with all kinds of different things, but there's one thing that's for sure is He is the breaker of all chains. He's the, he's the mover in the midst of your storm, in your situation. Though you have all the doors closed in the house and you feel like there's no way out, He finds a way to open up that window. And I'm so thankful for the Lord. He... He's not just somebody that I make my Walmart list to and say, God, I need this, this, and this. He is the king of all kings. Amen. If he did not bless us anymore, church, he has blessed us enough. Amen. And uh, today, I hope that we've been a reflection of that. And uh, I know they're about to find a song. Have you put that song yet? I think we should do uh, Roll You Over the Tide. I, I love this old song. It's a an old Kyla Rowland song. And when she wrote this, you could definitely tell by the, the words that she penned that she was going through a trial. And I love the fact that it says, he'll roll you over the tide. Now, just a little bit of a funny story. Last night we were in Alabama, and I did tell you that I am a Monroe, Louisiana girl. And you can imagine how I felt if any of you follow football. I was standing, one Louisiana girl, in the midst of a whole bunch of Alabama fans. And we just so happened to sing the song, Roll You Over the Tide. So can I just say before we sing this song, I am so glad that we are back in Tennessee. Hallelujah.
so blessed at 21 years old to still have three out of my four grandparents living and I do not take that for granted and uh, my granddaddy he is 86 he lives with my parents back home in Georgia and uh, so he is uh, I don't know a nice way to put this but uh, <laughs> he's not senile but yet very senile 
And uh, so he terrifies us every time he opens his mouth. And there's nothing we can do about it except sit and just grin and bear it. And, uh, but we don't mind it. He is, he's hysterical, keeps us all rolling. And uh, he's one of those that, uh, what's my joke? I always forget my joke when I'm supposed to tell my joke. Yes, he has no filter. Thank you. It's been a while since we did this, too. So he's one of those. He has no filter whatsoever. Whatever pops in his mouth, he says it. And I'm sure everyone in this room has somebody in their family that is just like that. And if no one pops in your head, you're probably it. But uh, <laughs> so, uh, so I love this song here. And it's all and I'll about be taking family. applications for another singer after this is over. <laughs> I think I'm the one that's singing now. Here we go. When the falling rain this morning, a familiar voice was heard. It was the sound of my grandmother. I hung on every word. She laughed about granddaddy and the funny things he'd say. Asked me when I'd come to see her and told me all about her day. Before we hung up the phone, she said, I love you. I said, I'm on the road, I love you, and I'll see you soon. When I got home the next week, another call came in. And this time it was called Paul. Asking how my trip had been He said that him and Mama Had a date the night before And told me even after 60 years Somehow he loved her boy I thought about the day When I had my own family I hope that I can just be
I tell you, we have had such a wonderful time with you this morning. Um, I have to be honest with you, even though I've been a pastor's kid all my life, I have never liked morning time. And uh, I feel like the Lord starts moving about noon, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> if there was ever a church that started at noon, I would be the one to go. <laughs> Front row seat. Yeah, that's right. Um, but we've had a great time, and uh, we've been on a 10-day stretch, and this is our 11th day of our 10 days, and we've been so busy, and we've worked hard, we've poured ourselves out, and sometimes we just want to service to where we feel at home and to where we feel like we can have church with you and not just pour ourselves out on you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? And uh, we, it's been that way here. There's been such a sweet spirit, and uh, we just appreciate you for... Um, coming and expecting a move of God and just there there's such a great spirit in this place and, and this church is very blessed and we can sense that and so we thank you all for inviting us we do hope to come back sometime you know, we'd love to come back. I mean we're practically home we're only about an hour hour and a half from Hendersonville so we like that when we get to be close to home but uh Every, everywhere the 11th hour goes, we always open an opportunity for people to reflect on themselves and reflect on their relationship with God. And uh, as I, I've said before, we're all pastor's kids up here. We've been raised in the ministry. We, were, we had a drug problem growing up. We were drugged to church every single time the door was open. <laughs> every single time. But uh, a story... My testimony, I wish I had more time to share with you, but I'd love to talk with you guys. We do have a product table, and after the service, I'd love to share a little bit more of my story with you. But for time's sake, I want you to know that I am one of those church members that got saved. And I was the pastor's daughter that got saved. I, I've been singing on stages every weekend of my life. And uh, even before I was born, I was on a bus in my mother's room. And uh, we were traveling, singing, and we uh, sleep on the pews on Saturday night and get up so Dad could preach on Sunday morning. But I, I didn't realize until I was 17 years old that the Lord would use a song that I wrote to convict my heart. And that's how I knew for sure that the call of music was on my life. But I say that to say this. I went for many, many years a member of a church, a pastor's daughter, a gospel singer, but I did not know the Lord. I carried the gospel, but I didn't have the gospel within me. And I know on a homecoming day like this, the Sunday morning crowd, you are the faithful people that come to church. But I want you to know there is a difference in knowing God and knowing about God. I knew about God, but I didn't know God. But man, I tell you, once I got to know Him, and once He saved my wretched spirit, had to do with the meaning of a true gospel song was in my life. And just how the music could have effect on people. And so this morning I would trust that each and every one of you know the Lord, but if you don't, or if you have any kind of a doubt, I'm going to ask if the pastor would come. We're going to open these altars up for you to come. But I want you to know if you're saved, there's never, ever, ever a time that we should think that we know everything about God and that there's no more room to grow. I don't know about you, but I want to be closer. I want to grow closer. And so this is just a time to do just that. So as we sing this song, He sees what we don't want in our
Words lost or lose And some just see teardrops Fall into the floor Just a waste of time